My name is Deborah Blumenson Sonnenstraw. This is the name I use for my professional life. I'm sure people already know my biography, but I love to say something. People may have not known. Quite often, people ask me, how come I never see your artworks? I laugh and say that I'm not an artist. But I'm an art historian. This is what I am. I love art history and deaf artists. Enough about me. Let me introduce a fantastic person. Jackie Shirts. Are you ready for me to ask you a few questions? Hi, Jackie. Hi, Deborah. I mean, Devora. You prefer to be called that name. Thank you. My first question to you is, could you tell me a bit about your background? Where were you born? Anything you would like to share about your background? To sum it up in as little as possible, I grew up with deaf parents and a deaf sister in Brooklyn, New York. I attended the Lexington School for the Deaf until I was 10 years old. When my parents realized I wasn't being academically challenged at that point in time. So they decided to enroll me in hearing school. I don't call it being mainstreamed because it was a time before interpreters, accessibility laws, and support. I was the only deaf person but I survived. After graduating from Hearing High School, I attended RIT, and it was such a surreal experience having an interpreter for the first time and being able to participate in class and understanding everything. Oh, wow. Wow, that is good. Okay, so have you ever become bat mitzvah? Do you know any Israeli sign or the Hebrew language? I did attend Sunday school. And I had a private tutor to help prepare myself for my bat mitzvah. Unfortunately, my mother passed away when I was 12. And my father felt as if it was too much to proceed with my bat mitzvah at that point. Also, growing up, I wanted to join a deaf Jewish congregation. And in New York, there were three. So I spent some time jumping around, trying to figure out which one fit me. Throughout that experience, I learned so many Judaism-related signs, such as Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Moses, and so on. Good. Why do you become an artist? Growing up, I love doing things with my hands. I specifically remember using color by numbers, which would teach kids how to draw within lines. I absolutely loved colors. When I was at Lexington, there would be a day every week dedicated to art, and that was always my favorite day. I was always excited to make new things. From there, 
I started taking more specific art courses in high school relating to painting, printmaking, sculpting, and so on. I actually received a full art scholarship for, for college when I had already decided to attend RIT. So I was a bit conflicted. I spoke with my grandfather, who is my artistic inspiration, and he told me, you don't want to be a starving artist. Art will always be there. So go and get a real job. <laughs> that was it at that point. Do you have any favorite mediums that you work with? Or do you enjoy working in different ways? I actually work with stained glass now. The process of breaking glass, arranging and gluing them, and then to pick it up and see the light reflect and refract through my work is incredibly inspiring and rewarding. I also love to play with intense colors. I really like one particular brand of colored pencils, Prismacolor, and their colors are so intense. How do you define yourself? A deaf artist, Debbie artist, or just an artist, period? Or Jewish artist? How would you define yourself through your artwork? I don't consider myself a Devia artist. But because I'm deaf, I automatically include Devaya characteristics in my work. I don't intend for it to happen, but it does. For example, a popular piece of art that everyone wants to buy one, I make a Hamza. It combines the Jewish and deaf parts of me. Can you explain? I'll show you an example. You know that Devaya art emphasizes the eyes and hands, and we deaf people communicate with the eyes and hands. The Hamza is a Jewish symbol of protection against all evil things. So it was cool to have that connection between Jewish and deaf art. Most of all, though, I love color in my art. I intentionally pick and choose specific glass colors for my work. And that is an element of Devaya art. Bold and contrasting colors. Who is your biggest artistic influence, if you have any, or anything that influences your artwork? Okay. My grandfather used to take me to art museums in New York City. And there are hundreds of art museums in the city, so I would go to a different one every time. He would always ask me to how I felt about a work of art and how it connected to me. Doing this, you learn to interact with art with more depth. My grandfather was definitely an artist, but on the side. He was actually a science teacher, teaching fifth grade in elementary school. Whenever he traveled, 
he would bring a watercolor palette and canvas and paint wherever he was. I have a few of his watercolors. I'm curious. He was a big influence on me. I'm curious. Was he deaf or hearing? Hearing. But he always wanted to interact and communicate with me. He would communicate via writing. That's the end of it. Could you show us some of your art to our viewers? Yes. Can you change the current screen to show my uh, imagination? I'll let you explain your artwork. That piece is my opus. It is a lot bigger than me. It's actually eight feet tall and four feet wide. NTID commissioned me to create this piece because at the time, NTID was planning on constructing a new building on campus named Imaginary Hall. The purpose of this building was to create a space where faculty and students could work together on research, projects, art, and so on. With that information, I played with the concept of imagination. I started with the middle kernel of an idea. And it grew over time into something much bigger. And there are still aspects that haven't been explored. I'm not sure if you noticed, but all of the glass is clear glass, but with differentiating textures. Originally, I planned on using loud and vibrant colors, but the building designer gave me a color palette to refer to. And it had subtle and muted colors. I had to adapt, but I thought, okay, I can work with that since it was possible to find glass that matched the palette. It simply lacked that wow factor. So while working, I thought to use textures instead of bold colors. I submitted this proposal to the building designer and they were over the moon about what I wanted to do regarding textures. At that point, I was ready to get to work. Different textures can represent the different personalities and backgrounds of people. who, you know, make up committees in that building. And artistic textures can also represent elements in nature. You could hammer glass in a way to represent rain or ice. Okay, I think we're running out of time. I want to thank you for a fantastic interview. I really appreciate it. My pleasure. Good luck with everything you do in the future, too. Thank you. Bye-bye.